I'd like to thank the Society for inviting me to present our work on predicting risk for acute type B aortic dissections. As many of you know, type B acute aortic dissections, or AAD, can be medically managed. However, this aortic pathology is still associated with significant morbidity. Although many risk factors exist for AAD, hypertension continues to be the most significant, with over 75% of AAD patients suffering from hypertension. Yet a disparity exists between hypertensive patients who do and do not develop type B AAD. Nearly 75 million American adults are hypertensive, yet the incidence of AAD is extremely small in comparison, suggesting that using screening alone for hypertension to prevent AAD may be inappropriate. As such, we sought to develop an aortic profile to identify hypertensive patients most at risk for development of type B AAD. In order to do this, we performed a retrospective study of Mount Sinai patients who presented to the emergency room complaining of chest pain and who received a CT angiography uh, to rule out aortic dissection and other thoracic pathologies. We identified normotensive patients, hypertensive patients without AAD, and type B AAD patients who met the following inclusion criteria. They received a multi-detector CTA within two weeks of symptom onset, they had no history of prior aortic repair in the proximal aorta, and they had no history of established connective tissue disorder. From here, we assessed vitals, medical history, demographics, along with ECG-gated MDCTA of the thoracic aorta, in which we assessed the midline length of the proximal and entire aorta, the volume and diameter of segments of the proximal aorta, tortuosity, defined by the midline length divided by the straight line distance between segments of the, of the proximal and entire aorta, as well as angulation of the brachiocephalic and left subclavian arteries off the ostium of the aortic arch. On presentation, we found that compared to normotensive and hypertensive patients, AAD patients had elevated systolic blood pressures. This was even after administration of IV antihypertensives en route to the hospital. In addition, AAD patients were more likely to be black, have a smoking history, and be actively smoking compared to hypertensive patients. Next, we assessed antihypertensive medications, and we found that there was no difference in the number of patients taking antihypertensive medications or the number of medications being taken. Given this, the elevated systolic blood pressures in AAD patients may be due to an underlying aortopathy rather than improper management of hypertension. Interestingly, we found that more AAD patients were taking calcium channel blockers than non-AAD hypertensive patients at presentation. Next, we assessed anatomic variables in which we compared AAD and hypertensive measurements to normotensive patients, and we, and we normalized them to 100%. AAD patients had larger lengths, volumes, and diameters in the segments measured. Essentially, they had larger aortas in general. In addition, the ascending aortic volume and diameter showed a positive correlation with systolic blood pressure. So as systolic blood pressure increased, so did these volumes and diameters. Entire aortic tortuosity was larger in AAD patients, and brachiocephalic angulation was smaller in hypertensive patients compared to normotensive patients. We took these variables and applied them into a predictive model to assess risk for AAD. Using a stepwise logistic regression, we found that aortic arch diameter, entire aortic length, and brachiocephalic angle may be used to predict type B AAD development with a predictive value of 0.974 as measured by the receiver operating curve, or ROC, which is a measure of predictive validity of this model. In fact, the addition of entire aortic tortuosity only increased the ROC by 0.003, suggesting that we have an excellent predictive model that only uses anatomic variables to predict AAD. Here's an example of how one may use the predictive model in the clinical setting. If we have a 62-year-old gentleman with a blood pressure of 190 over 110, with an aortic arch diameter of 120%, entire aortic length of 115%, and brachiocephalic angle of 80%, all relative to normotensive patients at 100%, we apply these values to get a Y coefficient of 1.0158, which is next applied into the probability equation. 
telling us that this patient has a 73.4% chance of developing a type B AAD. Therefore, based off of retrospective data, we can assess that this patient has a high risk of AAD development based off of anatomic variables alone. In conclusion, AAD patients are more likely to have altered geometry of the proximal aorta compared to patients with hypertension alone. We've developed a multivariable AAD predictive model using three anatomic variables from gated MDCTA with excellent predictive power. Despite similar number of antihypertensive medications, the elevated systolic blood pressures in AAD suggest that they may be suffering from an underlying aortopathy that requires further investigation. We also believe that the role of calcium channel blockers in AAD may warrant further investigation as well. We believe it's feasible to stratify patients based on adequacy of control of hypertension, race, and smoking history. For example, here's a preliminary algorithm for AAD prevention in the hypertensive model. The most hypertensive patients require echocardiography for cardiac function assessment. In doing this, we can assess the ascending aortic diameter. From our, from our investigation, we found that ascending aortic diameter correlates positively with systolic blood pressure. So if a patient does not have enlargement of the ascending aorta but has hypertension, they may be continued with current antihypertensive uh, medications. If they do have enlargement, however, the next question we may ask is, is this patient black, a smoker, or have a history of smoking? If no, they may require more aggressive antihypertensive regimen for the enlarging ascending aorta, but may not necessarily benefit from CTA. Instead, they may benefit from serial echocardiography. <coughs> if yes, however, these patients may benefit from CTA for predictive model assessment in order to assess the risk of AAD development. Using this algorithm, not all hypertensive patients require, require CT angiography, but rather a select subset of patients that this study has identified as being most at risk for AAD. Thank you.